Hi, my name is Marsha and welcome to Coding Blonde. It's always amazing to see incredible women in tech. So today I wanted to highlight and talk to some amazing women who are part of the innovation group at Providence St. Joseph Health. They're working on some really exciting projects in health tech. So I have interviewed them about that. We've also talked about the future of health tech and they gave some incredible advice for other women in tech. Before we jump in, I just wanted to say thank you to Providence St. Joseph Health for supporting this video. All right, let's get to the interview. Here are these incredible women. Hi, my name is Sara Vaizi. I'm the Chief Digital Strategy Officer at Providence St. Joseph Health. Hi, my name is Lisa Mason. I am Director of Design, User Research, and Product Analytics here in Providence. Hi, I'm Nicole, and I am a software engineer at Providence Health. Hi, my name is Mariam Polami, and I'm the Vice President of Product uh, for Digital Innovation at Providence and St. Joe's Health. So what are you currently working on and what do you do as part of that project? We as a group at Providence St. Joe's Health Digital Innovation Group, we're working on something we call um, the same day care platform. We also have a name for it called DexCare, which is short for Digital Experience Care. And what we're working on is a platform that allows our patients and ultimately patients at other health systems too, to um, engage in same day care. So imagine you wake up in the morning, you feel like you have the flu and you just need to see somebody now. Um, and we're building a technology platform that lets you book an appointment um, that same day or do a virtual visit with your provider, which is essentially like FaceTime and in some of our cities actually be able to call a provider to your home. So think of like an Uber-like or Lyft-like experience. Um, and that's what we're working on. So in particular, my role is actually more on the business side. So I've got great partners on the product and technology side, but I'm working on creating a company around this. So we're going to be building a new company and spinning it out of Providence at the end of this year. We're looking at, I'm, I'm hiring a CEO, um, we're going to be raising financing pretty soon. So, um, so I handle a lot of the actually new company creation as well as business development. So um, making sure that we can get this out to market, um, convey the value proposition to other health systems and, um, and get it out there for as many patients to use as possible. So currently I'm working on a project that is a redesign of the mobile application. Our mobile application does a really good job of helping patients schedule virtual visits or retail visits, but it's not really set up to go much beyond that. So what I'm doing is redesigning the product so it can handle more features, more functions, and be re more responsive to our patients' needs. So currently I am a front-end developer working on DexCare. So we do the front-end web-facing um, UI for everything around sex care and we are doing a lot of the express care scheduling. So if you've ever seen any express cares that you might see in a Bartel or Walgreens, um, then those are the little clinics. So we actually do online scheduling for that as well as our new virtual care, which has just gone to, um, or we're trying to get into 100% of all of our clients. And then we're also going to be working on home care. So we do all of that. And I actually, I mostly do front end UI, but I do some back end work. So currently we're working on various projects, uh, but I'm gonna tell you about my favorite one. Uh, my favorite one is the same daycare platform we are working on. Uh, if you think about uh, our mission and the goal that we have, it's to bring access, uh, convenience, and affordability uh, to every consumer out there, including the poor and the vulnerable. And uh, one of the issues that's happening uh, in the healthcare world is there is a shortage of uh, doctors. Um, uh, we are actually supply constrained. So as a consumer, if today I get sick and I have, uh, you know, I, I need to talk to a doctor, uh, in, in US actually, it's not that easy to just go ahead and book an appointment with your uh, primary care doctor. The same daycare platform, 
platform enables consumers to uh, book an appointment with a retail clinic nearby um, so they can hopefully walk to that or if it's not convenient they can do a virtual uh, visit and that means they can talk to someone through chat or through video um, or they can actually summon a doctor to come to their home and that's pretty convenient when um, a whole family is sick with flu hopefully that doesn't happen uh, to that many families but it's pretty convenient to just ask the doctor to come to your home the same day care platform is one of my favorite projects because the problems we are solving there uh, is quite diverse. We basically want to make sure that access to healthcare is frictionless. So think about uh, booking an appointment, but doing your payments, uh, filling all those uh, forms that when you go to a doctor office, all that becoming digitalized and as convenient as possible. Kind of like travel, boarding pass ready. Um, you asked about my role. So I have a team of product managers, uh, product designers, and also technical program managers who work very closely with our engineering team to uh, incubate um, problems that are not solved yet in, in the healthcare world. Uh, we incubate that and then uh, we uh, make it available to uh, Providence St. Joe's hospital system. And then after that, we make it scalable so that other health systems or any entity out there uh, can benefit from it because ultimately our goal is to help uh, every patient, every consumer out there. In your opinion, what's the future of health tech? There's so much potential. So what I'll just say is I think um, I take the, the concept of disruptive innovation a lot and make what, you know, a lot of um, a lot of folks that have insurance or are, you know, kind of what we call like higher in the market, um, we bring those same services to as many people as possible. So I think really the future of health tech is um, democratizing services and um, in particular care delivery, which is like one of the most important things, you know, we need to get affordable, accessible care in the hands of as many people, every single human being um, in the world <laughs> and in the United States in particular. Um, I think that's the future of health tech is making affordable, accessible care available to all. So that's a really interesting question. Uh, from my perspective, because I'm dealing mainly with patients, what I see is a blending of wearable technology with big data and the doctor's data. So if you think about devices like Fitbit that can track your heart rate, your sleep patterns, your exercise, patterns is kind of of a black box. It would be awesome if your doctor could have access to that data and information so you can do early diagnosis, um, even eventually get to being able to remotely monitor you and help you with your medications. Just based on being in the healthcare industry for two years now, I wasn't actually in it before I joined Providence Health. It seems like really the future of healthcare is where we're going. So providing virtual care, providing resources for people who don't feel like they actually need to be at their primary care physician's office every time something small happens. Um, the ability to get quick access. So from you know, people my age that I know, we're constantly looking to, as quickly as possible, get in and get an answer rather than scheduling two weeks out. So that was a huge reason that I was drawn to this particular product, and I think that we are actually heading in the right direction. Um, and so I really see the future of healthcare as moving even further into virtual care and having, you know, I've heard there are some apps that now are trying to do body scans, like different things where you can actually see the body and interact with a person and it's, you don't have to actually be in the chair with your position. So anything in that direction is where I think we're going. Not that I don't think it's useful to have an actual physician to go to, um, but if there are ways that we can diagnose without making people go into an office, then I think that's where we will be heading. That's such an awesome question because there is, there is just so much to do. Um, so I talked about the problems that we need to solve, right? Uh, there, is a shortage of, uh, there is a shortage of doctors, we are supply constrained. Uh, and then access and convenience, and I would say even affordability and cost is an issue that needs uh, to get solved. Now, if you think about what's happening on the technology side, there's all this 
uh, data and information that's getting collected, right? Most of the doctors now, they document their, uh, the patient's health information in an electronic health records in an EHR. Uh, and then simultaneously, there's all these wearables and IoT devices that consumers are uh, purchasing more and using more. So uh, your Apple Watch is actually tracking tons of data about your health, right? Adding to that is all the information about genomics that's coming. So the question is, um, uh, how do we take uh, all this data and then all the advancements that's happening in um, machine learning and artificial intelligence and solve uh, at least a couple of problems that I see, right? One is access and convenience and the shortage of supply. And the second thing is all these tasks that humans are doing in the healthcare um, space, uh, that's really not our, our forte. It's not really meant for humans. So I'll give you some examples. There are tasks that are just difficult for humans to do. Uh, we uh, are not able to um, take all that data and analyze it, uh, do that heavy computation uh, in real time and uh, you know, do the job that we need or even accessing certain pieces of information uh, from all that pool of data is, is something that doctors and providers are going, need to, uh, are going to need help with. So that's one area that with uh, predictive analytics or artificial intelligence, uh, we can address. The other thing are tasks that are really dull. Um, so when you go to a doctor today, actually, that, that happens in our retail clinic, if the provider has to come and collect your payments or uh, write your information on these physical forms, that's, that's quite boring. Um, if a patient is staying at a hospital, uh, asking a nurse to come turn on, uh, turn on and off the lights for me, that's boring. These problems are getting solved, right? Uh, for example, now you have um, Alexa devices that are getting implemented in senior care homes or in hospitals, and you can actually just Alexa to do that job for you right? Uh, or, or on our platform, on our same day care platform, we are digitalizing many of these uh, things like payments or uh, patient intake and digital registration so that um, a human doesn't have to do the dull task. Um, and I would say there is another category that I think needs to be um, solved by technology, and that is tasks that are to some degree dangerous, not safe or dirty, um, like waste management in a hospital, it shouldn't be our job, right? Humans are there to give care um, and have that, that human connection with the patients and consumers. And uh, I think that the trend that's going to happen is that many of these are going to get automated and uh, our caregivers are going to be augmented with very good tools around them in the future. And of course, for patients, uh, what it also means is that um, you don't necessarily have to go to a doctor. You can actually have uh, get monitored by all these devices and, and the analytics um, remotely or, um, you know, better than that is the information is there. They can predict what may come my way. So they can say, hey, Mariam, you're not getting your exercise. <laughs> and guess what? You know, um, you're, you're going to have heart problems. We can see that in your data. So get out there. And my final question is, what advice would you give to women who are just entering the tech industry? I have a lot of different things that I would suggest, but so a couple of different things. One, you know, I think be resilient um, in particular. Uh, so I haven't worked in um, technology outside of healthcare, but I can say that health tech, you know, healthcare IT is a very rapidly transforming industry and um, healthcare has been, you know, changing a lot in, in particular in the last 10 or so years. Um, and change is hard and transformation is hard and just be resilient and keep pushing and um, it's, you know, don't, uh, don't get discouraged. So like that resilience, I think it's really important. And then um, get your hands dirty, um, be sort of willing to uh, try new things and, and really get in there with, with, the, with the details so that you know, like why certain things work and why other things don't work. Um, in particular, in the context of like our provide, like your providers, so doctors or nurses um, or other um, caregivers. Um, so I think, you know, those two, getting your hands dirty, being resilient, those are two of the biggest things that I've done um, that have served me pretty well. My advice for women entering the tech industry is do you. And there's so many books out there that tell you to lean in or how to get to yes. But if those don't match your personality, it's not going to work for you. 
You need to be true to who you are and find physicians, mentors, bosses, companies that understand that being you is an asset organization. They need diversity, so changing isn't going to work. I feel like there's a lot of advice I could give, but most of it is really just getting to know other women in in the industry I, so that they can see that there are other women there. What I've noticed is that women are just afraid to join because they don't recognize that there are other women that are part of the industry that they can talk to and have support from. So there are a ton of really fantastic groups in most people's areas when they're entering. Um, like we have women who code here in Seattle, but we have among that tons of other organizations that you can get to know and um, get involved with. I recommend getting involved with these groups so that you do have that support system. Um, I do recommend having a mentor. It doesn't have to be a woman or a man, but just always having a mentor that's going to be there for you to help you with your support system. I really, I really think support systems are the most important part of um, anything. You can learn. I believe that every woman can just learn how to be in tech and be a good engineer, but if you don't have the support behind you, you might want, not want to stay there. And so I'm less concerned for people in their learning journey than I am in the support journey. I can tell you what has helped me um, in this space. So I've been working in the technology space for over 15 years. I studied computer science uh, when not that many women were in that, uh, in that field. So throughout my career, um, definitely there have been many challenges. Um, and let me just say that the challenges may be for anyone in their career, woman or man. Uh, but of course, because we are minority, the world is starting to understand that they really need us there. Um, the challenges are more for us. It's really important for women to make sure that throughout their career and journey they have mentors um, and not just one mentor multiple mentors you need mentors who can give you advice and guidance on what to do in certain situations uh, but you have the ones who can motivate you and lift you up when you need that or the ones who have a good network and they can help you and of course um, you know I talked about um, importance of having mentors is also important to pay back or pay it forward and have um, and mentor others and have mentees. And that's something that I'm really passionate about uh, um, to, to do. So I would say that's uh, my number one advice. Uh, and then number two is um, being in the healthcare space, healthcare tech, uh, for over uh, six years now, I can tell you that um, is one of the best industries to explore. And the reason for it is that uh, when it comes to health health care, um, more than 90% of the household, uh, household health care spend is um, actually uh, managed by women. Women take care of their own health. They take care of health of uh, their loved ones, even their extended family. Uh, it's just something that we, we women care about a whole lot. Uh, whether you're a software engineer, a product designer, a product manager, it's really important for you to, to understand the problem space you're working on. And I think you can have a big influence in that space. So I encourage everyone to look at the space. And then uh, for those of you who would love to live in Seattle, we are hiring. So thank you so much, Mariam, Sarah, Lisa, and Nicole for sharing your insights on the industry and that incredible advice. You're working on some really cool projects that will change the world. And I'm so excited to see where you take them. It's incredible to talk to empowered women in tech. It just makes me so happy. And all of their advice is so incredibly useful and helpful. I hope you guys watching this have found it helpful as well. And again, thank you Providence St. Joseph Health for supporting this video and for enabling this sort of innovation in the healthcare industry. If you guys want to find out more about Providence St. Joseph Health and the awesome projects that they are working on, I will leave some links in the description. So go scroll down and click those links to find out more. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments what you think about the future of health tech and whether it's aligned with what Mariam, Sarah, Lisa, and Nicole were sharing today. And which advice did you find the most relatable? Like this video if you've enjoyed it, share it with a friend, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And you can also find me on other social media as Coding Blonde. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.